So here's the final result we'll be making. It's a pretty fun project that doesn't require much knowledge. It's just some basic JavaScript. We're making a SVG that bounces off the walls and changes color. So yeah, let's get started. First, we will get the SVG. Uh, it's here on Wikipedia. We'll just save that. And we're gonna want to make a new folder that we open with VS Code. We just drag this in. Uh, we'll wanna make an index.html file and paste that SVG in. So we could open this uh, HTML file with our extension live server. Nice. Okay, so by default, uh, this is pretty big. That is because of this width and height here. And we can just set one of these. Maybe we'll set the height to some arbitrary value. I'll do 6rem here, but this could really be anything. Nice. Uh, so oh, we're going to want some script tags to put our JavaScript in. And maybe the first thing we can do is just get a reference to this element. And it helps us out there. Nice. So, oh, and we won't be needing this SVG file anymore. And we can just close this. So, th there's some different ways of thinking about this. Um, the way I like to think about this is that the X of the DVD logo is really just going to travel within this range here. And uh, the Y is going to travel within this range. And these ranges are pretty easy to compute. So, maybe we'll do that now. We'll say the H range. So really the H range is just the windows width minus the uh, SVG width. And the vertical range is very similar here. And the way we're actually going to position this is with like CSS variables. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need it to have a certain position property. We're going to position it with fixed. That'll allow us to set the top and left of it. And really, this is an animation. So this needs to happen like every frame, and it's dependent on like your monitor's refresh rate. So let's set up a function here that will be ran every frame with this animation. And it's suggesting some stuff here, but we'll uh, we'll bring our H range and V range in here in case we want to resize our window as uh, as the animation is going. And uh, we uh, then we'll need a little bit more info. So, so to calculate the x and y, we really need like the time. So we could get the time. Performance.now will give us the time since the page is opened, and now we have everything to, we need really to calculate the x and y position at any time in our animation. Um, maybe like a simple way we could start here is we could just say that our x is going to be uh, time modulus our h range. And we can apply this to our element by saying dvd logo style dot left. Nice. And uh, let's think here. So this is almost every. This is almost ready to run, but we need the loot. This loot function to call itself. We'll use request animation frame so that uh, the request animation frame will make sure to call this to the refresh rate of your monitor. So that's helpful. And then we just need to start this function once ourselves. And this should be enough. Okay, so this is pretty good. We got it moving, but uh, it's pretty fast. So let's slow it down here. Um, okay, so this is a good speed, but you'll notice that it isn't quite what we want. We want it to bounce back. Um, the way I like to do this is just add a little bit of math here. So maybe we'll multiply our H range by two. So then the DVD logo will go off. So then we'll... Uh, Maybe we'll subtract one H range here. So then now it starts off the screen, but it'll eventually come in. Here we go. Um, and if we take the absolute value of this, this is actually exactly what we want. So uh, it actually starts over here and then it'll bounce back and forth exactly how we expect. So yeah, that, that's pretty good. Um, and what's cool is the Y is pretty much the same exact thing, but with the height values. So copilot, picks this up pretty easily, nice. Um, and now we should see it moving uh, exactly how it moves. So, so this is pretty cool. And uh, we're almost done. So like the only thing remaining is that our example here, it has a black background and then it changes color for every bounce. 
So uh, the back, but we'll start with the black background here. The, the, the easiest way to do this is we just change the background color of our body. Background color, uh, whoops. Document the body dot background color. Scary me that isn't auto completing here. I don't know. Oh, uh, that's weird. Huh. Uh, but okay, so I did mess something up. Document dot. Oh, this is why. Uh, style dot background color. Nice. Okay, and so for the colors of our DVD logo, the way I like to do this is to like make some colors for it to cycle through. Uh, and Copilot will help us out, give us some good colors there, that's good. And if we compute the number of bounces that have happened, then we could get the uh, index into our, our color cycling array here. And uh, so what Copilot is suggesting here isn't quite right, but if we do something like time over age range, this will get us all the bounces that have happened horizontally. If we add that with the vertical bounces, we should get all the bounces that have happened. Um, this doesn't change anything yet, but if we use this to apply the correct color, so maybe we'll say uh, DVD logo. So really we're changing the fill element here, and uh, Copilot is right that we want to use modulus, so we'll wrap around and pick the exact color based on the number of bounces that have happened. And let's see if this works. But this is exactly perfect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty fun, simple project. You don't need to know much JavaScript. This ended up being only 37 lines. And yeah, pretty cool.